The correction is always quieter than the headline, or sometimes, in stories like today's, the correction is totally silent. But as a rule, whether we're talking big important stories like international diplomacy or economic policy or just some seemingly stupid story like what word was used by a fan at a baseball game, there's the initial presentation and then there's the truth. And one is much louder than the other. So even when the story is some otherwise stupid one that doesn't really matter, that is what matters about this story. The correction is always quieter than the headline. In other words, the truth is always quieter than the knee jerk and slower too. So when any given story breaks, there's a good chance you're being shown what someone wants to be the story, not what the story actually is. And so you have to be patient. You have to make like Jen Psaki and circle back. Otherwise, you'll be left with not just an incomplete understanding of what happened, but oftentimes a totally backward one. You will think that the Covington kids were the aggressors when it was actually the opposite. You will think that Kyle Rittenhouse was attacking people when it was actually the opposite. And in this case, you'll think that some raving racist was openly yelling the N-word at a black player at a Colorado Rockies game over the weekend. And if you only read the headlines and the opening paragraphs of the initial coverage, that is what you were told definitively. Not man accused of yelling a slur, not man apparently yelled a slur, not investigation seeks what was actually said. No, the guy was yelling the N-word. That is what happened according to what was reported by the credible journalists, otherwise fact-checking your Facebook posts as misinformation to be suppressed. During the ninth inning of Sunday's game at Coors Field, Miami Marlins outfielder Lewis Brinson was at bat, and on the TV broadcast, many people thought they heard a Rockies fan behind home plate yelling the N-word at him. And I don't have to censor this, Susan, because as official investigation has now determined, even if you think that's what you're hearing, that is not what you're hearing. But of course, the outrage of what you think you hear is far more important than the truth of what it actually is. And even more important still is that those responsible for your mishearing are vilified and threatened accordingly. If you're angry, someone must pay even if the truth is the first casualty. And so the Rockies, of course, issued the sort of totally gutless reactionary statement that somehow keeps getting taught as good PR, no matter how embarrassing it is later. The Rockies are disgusted. They say they have no tolerance for racism or discrimination. They're going to find this guy, and anybody using language like that is going to get banned from Coors Field. And the premise there is that this happened as presented, that the Twitter mob is correct, and so those definitive media headlines followed, and it's not enough just to betray a customer and condemn a high-paying fan as racist without validating anything first and then finding him and banning him. No, he's going to need violent treatment too. A Miami Herald reporter said the Rockies need to find that bastard and do bad things to him. A USA Today baseball columnist said put him in jail without the right to ever attend a sporting event, let alone anything else. Well, how's he gonna attend a sporting event from prison anyway? And even if this was what you thought it was, since when do we imprison people for speech crimes? Ironically, the sports investigator for the Washington Post went even further, incriminating not just the man who did the yelling himself, but all those nearby who must have heard it just as clearly as we did, but did nothing in response. They too are at least partially responsible. Shame on them for their silence in a situation like this. For their silence, they are complicit, say other blue check betters. And by the way, hat tip Drew Holden on Twitter, who's always assembling excellent threads of record on stories like this one. Simple screenshots in sequence are often a better representation of the story than any of the reactionary squawking that these supposed journalists put out themselves. And if any of them just stopped and thought for a moment, does any of this actually make any sense? Does it make sense that everybody in that situation just thought it was totally normal and they actually are a bunch of indifferent racist garbage people? Or is it possible that as direct witnesses to the event, they saw and heard something different than you did? Is that a possibility worth five seconds of consideration since they were actually there and you, by contrast, were sitting hundreds or thousands of miles away listening through a microphone that itself was dozens or hundreds of feet away? And even if you do think that you have better eyes and ears than the people who were actually there, if this guy was yelling the N-word at this black player, 
Why is he clearly facing sideways, away from the player, motioning at someone off to his right? Well, that is where the old slow truth finally comes hobbling with its walker into the story. Zoom the video frame out and who's he waving at? Wow, that's Dinger the dinosaur over there, the Rockies Triceratops mascot. Dinger! Dinger, he's yelling, clearly in that direction. And sure, that image is kind of low res, it's sort of hard to tell, but you don't have to rely just on the internet sleuths. You can rely on the official team investigation from the Rockies themselves. On Monday afternoon, the Rockies issued a statement saying after calls, emails, and video review, including communication with the accused man himself, that supposedly obnoxiously and overtly racist man was actually just trying to get Dinger's attention for a photo. A racial slur was never, in fact, uttered, but just in case you guys forget, if anyone does ever utter a racial slur, you're gonna be banned. But noticeably absent in any of this is an apology for accusing an innocent man of doing that before actually investigating it. In any sane society, this is a non-story that never even materializes. In any semi-sane society, these investigation results prompt these blue check journalists to scurry back to their high rise apartment holes to write up those quiet corrections to their stories, but we aren't among the sane or even the semi sane. So it's time for the cover ups and the double downs. And so the definitive headlines that you saw before suddenly morphed into much softer language. Before it was this happened with certainty, and now it's just a guy was accused of it and actually might have been doing something else. There were iterations of this same theme from all your supposedly trustworthy suspects, the AP, USA Today, the New York Times, and more. And the popular fallback is to blame the Rockies, not their own journalistic non-integrity. CNN originally reported, fan yells racial slur during a game, and that was later corrected to say it was the Rockies who backtracked not CNN or the other media outlets who got it wrong. As though proper journalistic process is just being told what is true, instead of independently evaluating and confirming what is true. And that same behavior happened with the New York Times too. It wasn't just that the headlines morphed, it's that the updated stories include no acknowledgement of that change or correction. The blame was just deflected and the initial inaccuracies were stealth edited with no note for the reader. And some people just straight up don't believe the facts or the results of the investigation. Keith Olbermann says that fan is still the supposed dinger screamer, and that it's all the Rockies fault for making it confusing. Others are accepting the truth, but still distorting it to suit the priority, its usefulness to the progressive narrative. The Marlins player in question, Lewis Brinson, says when he listens to the tape, he personally hears the N-word, though he says if that's not what the fan said, he's sorry for the backlash against him. But even if it wasn't true this time, the spirit of it is true because this happens to black players all the time. So we can't just throw that reality under the rug. Okay, so it happens to you all the time? Well, no, not me personally, but I know a bunch of guys and it happens to them all the time. Okay, got it. Well, forgive me if this sounds a lot, like a certain bus driver. I know from experience, dude. No, you don't. Well, not me personally, but a guy I know. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. No, 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 they didn't. And even if they did, you can't use the general to validate the specific. Just because crime happens in general doesn't mean every accusation of crime is valid. That's why we have a process for evaluating guilt. And finally, there is the most progressive position of them all. Well, maybe it's not just racial slurs that we have to watch out for, but also any words that kinda sorta sound even close to racial slurs. I was joking about this on Monday night, how long until the Rockies cave to the pressure and change the mascot's name, but that joke has actually become reality, or at least a serious response from some. The last line of TMZ's Monday report reads, Dinger, might just be a little too close to something else, it appears. And that player, Lewis Brinson, agrees. Unbeknownst to me at the time, he had already said on Monday that the Rockies should think about changing Dinger's name because it sounds too close to the N-word. If you did say Dinger, um, you know, maybe change the mascot's name. Um, it's, uh, it sounds a little similar, especially on video. Well, this is gonna get really awkward. By this standard, Major League Baseball has a lot to clean up. Slugger? The Royals lion mascot, way too many hard R's on that one, so he's gone. Mr. Met, 
way too close to Mr. Metback. Plus, here's Metback's wife and slugger hanging out in the past, presumably sharing their appreciation for racist jokes together. And has anybody seriously scrutinized the problematic nose on the Marlins mascot, Billy? Some might call that insensitive mockery. The point is, if you look for hurt, you can find hurt. And that's why it doesn't actually matter what that fan at the Rockies game said. If you want to be hurt by it, just like life in Jurassic Park, hurt will find a way. Just like all your preconceptions, by the way, what you want out of a story will take priority if you place any of those personal whims ahead of the truth. And that is why this story does matter. What we just watched is a bunch of people in journalistic power scrambling to make this story into what they want it to be, rather than what it is because they value an ideological agenda more than they value the truth itself. And it's tempting in this case to take comfort and think it doesn't really matter. Yeah, sure, they tried to ruin some innocent grandpa's life, and that sucks if you're him, but it doesn't really affect the rest of us, so who cares? Well. Even if that's true in this one particular case, it is certainly not that limited if this behavior is not, in fact, an anomaly. If instead, it is standard operating procedure. Because if you think they are only botching the stupid dinger stories while telling you the truth on the stories that really matter, well, you might actually be the most ridiculous one, even more so than the guy whose feelings were hurt by the name of a purple children's dinosaur, despite his six-figure salary to endure such agony. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below, and especially over on Parlor. that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Come on.